you've landed inside Launch Street, the business innovation podcast, where we interview top innovators out there shaking things up so you can innovate, differentiate, and get further, faster. Since you're here, we know you're the type of person that recognizes the importance of unlocking your innovation advantage so you can compete and win. And now, your host, the person that has worked with leading companies like Disney, Procter & Gamble, Aero Electronics, the U.S. Army Research Labs, and Red Robin on upping their innovation advantage, Tamara Gontor. All right, this is, I would say, part two of a three-part, or four-part series. I said three earlier in my live, but it's actually four, um, that we are doing where I bring on amazing business leaders who are just rocking it in their world to come actually interview me about innovation, which sounds very egotistical when I say that out loud, (laughs) but the reason we're doing that is because they ask the questions and then also bring their brilliance and their perspective and their knowledge to the table. And I think that's pretty awesome. And I have Chris Besh with me today who is brilliant at solving toxic workplace culture and making cultures that thrive so that you can perform and elevate your game and achieve your objectives and frankly have a great place to go to work. So, and I'll, Chris, I'll have you talk a little bit about that. But as I said in the last podcast, Chris might be one of, is, actually she would say might, one of my favorite people on earth. And I have known her for years. I can't even believe how long it's been, Chris. So, Chris, say hi, and then we'll dig in. Hi. <laughs> so, really excited to be with you all today. Tamara, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to get to interview you and hear your brilliance around innovation. Um, And again, my name is Chris Besh and my company is called Choose People and we really do support organizations in solving those really challenging people problems, Mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, gossip and drama and apathy and silos and all that crazy stuff. So, but you're here to hear about innovation. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And um, Tamara, I hear like in this segment, we are going to go ahead and this fabulous segment. So we're going to talk about asking the right questions. Um, so I'm curious, right? Like, I, you know, you and I have talked about this a little bit. And, you know, you think that we spend too much time in the solutions and yeah. not in the questions. So, like, what makes you think that? Well, it's funny because that sounds counter for someone in innovation. You would think you would hear me say we need to spend all our time in solutions. But here's what I've discovered over time. And actually, Chris, I kind of wonder going back to your people challenge, if this relates to culture too, just this whole premise. Super important innovation, but I kind of wonder its, it's impact in other areas. Um, here's, the, here's what I've discovered. Oftentimes, we're not answering the right question. And um, I'm going to give you an example of that in my world, and then I'll loop back to how I change that later. But it, we're, 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 solve, we're trying to solve the superficial challenge that we have, right? The thing that we see, the symptom. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor um, with a pain in your side, and you don't, get, you don't get treated for the pain. You get treated for what's causing the pain. So in innovation, and I'd say in work and life, we try to solve the pain, not what's causing it. And because we do that, the experience that we have is that that challenge shows up over and over and over again because the Band-Aid falls off and it's still there. We put another Band-Aid on and it falls off and it's still there. And I think that we'd actually get to better solutions, better answers, just better pathways of ideation for ourselves and our teams if we actually stopped and spent more time brainstorming around just the question we're even asking. So I'm going to give you a brief example um, of something in my world recently. So this is the podcast. I was about to say, as you all know, I have a podcast. Obviously, you're listening or watching. (laughs) Duh, tomorrow. So um, about two years ago, I was really frustrated because we couldn't get the numbers up. It just, we had hit a plateau and no matter, and it was good for podcast world was good, but we couldn't get to the next level, which I thought we needed to get um, sponsors. That was our goal at the time. It is no longer our goal. I could care less about it, but because I've spent time in the question, but the challenge was that was the problem I was solving for over and over again. How do I grow my audience? How do I grow my podcast listeners? And that led to a certain set of solutions, promotions, Google ads, referrals, reviews on iTunes, fill in the blank. And every time those didn't work over and over and over again. And it was so frustrating. And when I really, when I started to really dig in, what I found was it wasn't the solutions that were wrong. 
it was that the question wasn't, I wasn't asking the right question because I hadn't done the work to pull back the layers. And Chris, I don't know if you see that in your work when companies call you, but like what we think we need to solve and what we need to solve aren't usually the same thing. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I think again, people have great intentions yeah. and there seems to be an obvious answer. So in the culture world, it's the forced fun bowling party. Right, like, right where where they jump straight to action or the incentive program. Yeah, people like they're, like they got the, it's not connected. Yeah, and it's just not right, and and where you almost end up worse off for having right. Like you had the best of intentions, and I think that's part of what can be heartbreaking. And like even just hearing your story, we've all done it, right? We have the best of intentions. We were we, we and we put so much effort and time and energy behind this solution that does not actually get us to where we need, like does not get us to where we need to be. And in some cases can even be detrimental. Well, I will give you the example in the pot in this podcast is I spent a lot. I wasted, I shouldn't say spent, I wasted a lot yeah. of time and money on solutions. Had they been, so they were good solutions for that problem, but that wasn't actually the question I should have been asking. So, but I didn't realize that. So I spent a lot of time, a lot of money. I wasted a lot of energy and effort. Um, in solutions that didn't serve me over and over and over again in a slightly different way. So I think we, if we really want to open up to a more innovative and meaningful solution space, then we, what we really need to do is actually spend way more time on the question. And it can be a little bit frustrating. I had a client once who we were going to go through this and they were like, Tamara, I, I know what the problem is. I just need to solve it. And I was like, I hear you. And I bet you're right. And... What I need to do, right, what we as a team need to do is just, let's just explore this question. Let's really, like, let it sink in. And we did this exercise that I actually did on this J Innovation Jam session this morning with my, at the Everyday Innovators Art Tribe, our membership program. And um, it was profound, the insights that the team had, the group had, realizing that the question they were asking, if they, if they dug a little bit deeper, would actually get to way more solutions. And one person said, I, I've had doors of, of solutions, uh, doors open that didn't exist before because I was solving it in this one way, this one, answering this one question. So to me, it, it is essential. I'm going back to my client for a second. I'm talking a little bit in circles, but it's like eight stories that wrap into one. Um, we did it. They, begrudgingly, we did it. And then at lunch, they came up to me and they said, Tamara, my bad. <laughs> you were right. Like, it turns out I was solving the problem from my perspective and it was only the superficial side of it. I didn't realize that. I was like, of course, we all have good intentions. We just, we need to find out why, right? We're solving that child, that question and then we need to find out a better question because like I said, oftentimes it's like going to the doctor. It's not the one you think it is. Well, and um, gosh, I just, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm so curious to hear because who I know you to be is someone who's like, you're just Right, I call them action Jacksons. But yeah, I'm all about it. Because I'm like, oh, so how do we, because I've been there tomorrow, I've done the same thing you've done where I have like thrown time, effort, and energy after something and then it wasn't until months later that I was like, doggone it, you know? And I, this is a trite example, but I think about, we hear about Ford and the motor car and his vision. Yeah. And like how he wasn't about to create a better horse, right? Like that whole thing. Right. And well, we're asking, how do you make a better horse? He's like, I'm not, that's not, that's not the problem I'm looking to solve. So I really would love to hear, you know, I know you like to question questions. Yeah. Right. Um, so walk us through like how that works and why it's so juicy. Let me grab my glasses for this because I need to look at my other screen to read something. But before I do that, let me just say to your point about horses and cars. So um, I heard a speaker once share this story and I, I'm blanking on his name, so I apologize if you're out there, tag yourself. I'd love to give you credit for this. But he, he was sharing the story about like when Ford was just starting with the cars, London had an influx of people, which meant like the, the urban center just blossomed, right? And I should say exploded because it was like one on top of the other. And that meant a lot more horses. So the mayors of the different townships or whatever they're called in London um, got together to solve the problem. How do we deal with the horse manure? Well, what they weren't paying attention to was this thing over here called cars. So they're over there solving horse manure, and very soon that solution became irrelevant because cars had taken over horses. So to your point about the car and the like Ford's dream, 
we got to really think about the, the questions that we're answering. So I'm going to share these questions with you that allow us to explore questions. And I want to give you the podcast example to, to make it real. So there's three. This is a, a whole template that we have in our tribe. But one is... I'm um, pen tomorrow. Like, I'm ready. Let's I'm do ready. this. Okay. Let's so whatever your challenge is, right, whatever your question is you're trying to solve, you write that down first, obviously. So my challenge was, how do I grow my podcast? The second part of this is then you start to dig and you go, okay, well, why do I have this challenge? Why do I need to grow it? Well, I have this challenge of growth because iTunes doesn't allow for searching the way Google does. I can't do iTunes ads for my podcast. It's not getting found. Um, actually, well, if I really dig a little bit deeper, why I have this challenge of lack of growth is because maybe the content, at that point, we're focused on other guests all the time. Um, maybe the guests I'm bringing on aren't the right guests for my audience, so they're not sharing it or they're not listening to it as much, right? And then I started to really dig and I was like, wait a minute, I have this problem because I've got this stuff over here that's more immediate in my business and, I, and I'm not a podcast company. Like this is something that we do to provide value, but it actually turns out I'm not like an EO fire, right? John, John Lee Dumas, who does a brilliant podcast, but that is his business. So these are my whys. And that got me thinking differently about, wait a minute, why am I even solving this challenge? So that leads to me to my next question on the question, which is, well, what else does this challenge impact? Well, trying to grow my podcast in the way that I'm doing it and solving that means that I'm impacting my effort and time. The amount of time it takes me and my team to get ready for a guest is like 20 hours in a week. Like it takes a lot. We do custom questions. Like it is intense. So we're the impact of this challenge of growth is a time issue for us and wasted time and solutions. So that's the second part is like, well, what else does this challenge impact? So then I kind of dig in there and then I go over to, well, why do I need to solve this challenge to begin with? Really? Like I think oftentimes we're solving things we don't even need to solve. <laughs> so I know. Why? I mean, how many masks have you and I have been in where I've come in with like, I want to solve this challenge and you and Maureen who are both like, why? And I'm like, why? <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Is that so? Why? I don't know. So, but that led me to like, oh, I'm solving this. And literally, this is how it came out of my mouth. Sponsors? Like, I wasn't even convinced I wanted to go that route, yet that was the only reason to grow the numbers is to get sponsors because where we were was here and to get sponsors, you needed to be here. And when I started to really look into that, I realized something. I didn't have a growth problem. I had a format and a perspective problem. And then I solved those and I got to the right answer. So um, I'll give you an example in the data. So when I looked at the, in the last three months, right, we've added these people interviewing me, people like you coming on. When I look at the number of listens of that relative to a, like an official guest, these are way higher, way higher. And I was like, the dad is right in front of me tomorrow. What are you doing? You're solving the wrong challenge. So I realized I was, I was solving the wrong challenge. I, wasn't, I, sh I was trying to solve a growth challenge, but that actually wasn't my challenge. And that led me down that set of solutions that didn't work. The challenge I really had was a content and format challenge. And that allowed me to get to new solutions that actually work. So like what you and I are doing now, this, this idea of doing a Facebook Live and having people come on who can share their perspective and we can really dig into innovation, that came out of this. Realizing that, you know what? I don't care about the numbers. I care that the right people are in our membership are listening and have that extra value they need for the stuff that we talk about. So it, it changed everything for the podcast. And now guess what? I'm not wasting all my effort getting ready for guests that my get, podcast members don't even want. They want to hear me and the people who interview me. So like, and again, I don't mean that in an ego way. I just mean that as a, like, that's what they're here to, to, to hear, right, is to hear this kind of yeah. inside of innovation. So what am I doing, Tara? So, but I had to sit there and really pull apart my question. So the three, if you're out there listening, why do I have this challenge? And I would encourage people to go like three, four layers deep, but why, but why, but why? What else does this challenge impact? Because then you start to realize, wow, is this, do I really want to go down this path? And the third one is, why do I even need to solve this challenge? Just asking those three questions on your question will totally change your perspective. And you know what? You may find I am solving the right one, but I've got more depth and clarity around it now. Or you may discover like I did, a lot of people do, huh, I'm not solving the right 
challenge. Um, I'll give you a quick example from this morning without sharing anything confidential. One of our members in the tribe, she works in software, and her one of the big challenges that she faces is um, getting the customers up on best practices and quality assurance as they deliver the software. And when she did this, that was her challenge. When she started to shift it and did this exercise, she realized, oh, wait a minute, I have people who are doing the best practices all the time, what I need to do is connect them directly with the user and not try to be this middleman that's collecting all the data. So she freed up her time, but more importantly, she came up with this innovative solution that's more meaningful to her customers by changing the question she was asking. Hopefully that made sense. I feel like I rambled a little bit. There's, well, and it's like, it's odd for us to talk about challenging our questions. I love it though. And I just, Tomorrow, I want you to highlight again. So the first one is why do I have this challenge? Uh -huh. And ask why several times. Get mm -hmm. get in there, get down deep, yep. roll up your sleeves. Then what does this what does this challenge impact? Uh, what else? Like this is what where you else? understand, okay, actually this challenge doesn't impact anything, so why am I here? Or <laughs> I've done that. I've been like, why am I, you know, why am I fixing this over here when it has nothing to do with anything else? Or yeah. you discover like I did, the impact of this challenge, what you're dealing with is actually massive and you've got to figure out a solution or you got to shift your thinking around it. But I think you have to see it as a piece in the puzzle and not on its own to really understand it. Yeah. And then um, will you reiterate the third one? Yes. Why do I need to solve this challenge? And that one matters because I think you really start to understand, like you will hear it. So um, I was doing this exercise uh, virtually with, with a, on a webinar with a team thing. And I asked them, why are you trying to solve this challenge? And there were crickets. And the reason they were solving it is because someone up high told them to solve it. Oh, yes. Yeah, we should get into that a little because I feel like you have a few things to say about that. And, and, and here's the irony. So first of all, that, that person had good intention, so not to throw anybody under the bus. Right, right, totally. But they, they're not seeing what they're seeing. Now this team is stuck with this mandate to fix it, and they're, they, not only do they have no innovation, but they have no innovation because they don't need to fix it. <laughs> but they, had, they hadn't thought it through, right? They just they did what they were supposed to do. They picked up the challenge. So I don't know how you feel about that, but I think that's a big issue with how we make decisions is like we just, oh, well, we got to solve this because that's what we need to do. Well, yeah, and I just, again, one of the things that I see in my work, and, and actually you pointed to this a little bit in your experience, right, is that people will be like, oh, this is a people issue. Uh, and it's like, nope, it's a process issue, mm -hmm. or no, it's a purpose issue, or sometimes it's even like a profit issue. Uh, right. And so, like, I hear, like, in your, like, in what you were looking at, there was, like, a, when you look back to your purpose, like, why you exist and who you serve, and what your main yeah. business model is, that's when you're like, what am I doing here? Like, yeah. Why am I focusing on this? Yeah, why do I care about sponsors? That has nothing to do with why, like, the value of the podcast. Yeah. And it's, um, I've also seen situations where they think it's a process issue when it's a people issue, right? And we've all been there where a policy comes out <laughs> to address one person's way of being. Right. Um, <laughs> You know, you're like, no, <laughs> like, please, oh, please. So, yeah. I, and I love these three questions. I'm really excited to get to play with, yeah. play with those. Yeah. 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 It just gives us, it, here's the thing with innovation in particular. So especially if you're a leader with a team out there and even for yourself, whatever level you are, I kind of often think of leaders as just people who are trying to step up. It's not really about, about title. Um, what we need are frameworks. So I think oftentimes, so I believe in human innovation. I believe that we have this ability to innovate. I, I've seen it time and time again. The research shows it. My experience shows it. But I think in order to bring that innovation and that new thinking and that shift and that pivoting, all that stuff that we need to do to adapt and change with times um, and to come up with those solutions that are really going to last, we need frameworks that allow us to take that brilliance that we have and do something with it. And one of the, I think, feedbacks that I get that I'm most proud of from clients is that, oh my God, it was just so simple, right? It's just so easy. So I think we say to people, let's, let's challenge this. Is this really the question we need to solve? And then you get blank stares because we haven't given people the tool to say, let's explore this for a moment. We might be right. We might be wrong. doesn't matter. Let's explore this. And here are three questions we're going to ask to get there. Um, 
I think sometimes we just need a framework to help us do that. That's all. And, you know, we were talking about on the podcast before about innovate and analyze, right? Mm-hmm. It's just a simple framework for breaking it up. That's all. We just, we just need some tools to do it. And, um, I, you know, I don't know. I'd love to know, Chris, when you go into toxic cultures, like, do they know what the real issue is or does that get uncovered like a stinky onion? It usually gets uncovered. Yeah. Clarity. Yeah. They're present to like, we have gossip or we have entitlement or Mm -hmm. we have drama or, you know, any of those things, but they don't know, like, and again, they're trying. I think that's the thing, like going back to like, that can just be so heartbreaking as people are really trying, they're making efforts and they're, they're throwing things at it and they're not making a difference and they'll even throw raises at it. Right. They'll give people raises and they're still not happy. It's like, well, yeah, because it had nothing to do with right money right like um right so yeah yeah can i I address one thing that you said that i would just i know this is a little bit off topic but i want to get your perspective on this Mm. Uh, you said something about like one person so i made the comment about like leadership says you need to solve this problem and suddenly we're stuck solving a problem that either we don't need to solve or it's not really the problem we should be solving right so that's what this exercise is so helpful it also helpful because you can go to leadership and say he, we've done some work on the problem. Here's what we think. Um, but you made a comment about sometimes like a new policy comes out because of one person's behavior, one person's thinking kind of relating that to like the leader with the innovation or the challenge. Um, this is such a vile example, but I'm going to share it because it's the only one I have. And I just, I want to hear your perspective on, cause I think we have policy and initiative fatigue all over the place. This is why I think innovation needs to be human centered, not process driven. Cause we don't need another process, right? We're, we're done with that. So at my gym, I'm sorry, Jim, I love you. But at my gym, um, this was a while ago. Now there was, I go to a 5am class. There was one person who had very bad bathroom etiquette for lack of a better way to say it. That person wasn't addressed, but we all know who it was. It was in our class. We all know. (laughs) But instead of that person being addressed, there suddenly became this like bathroom policy about how to behave in the bathroom across the entire gym. And I get why that happened from leadership, but I just, I just throw a little nugget of gold in there because to me, it was a little bit like, why don't we just address the person, right? Like there's one person. And, And then I felt like, right. And then I felt like, If that were me, Chris, it wasn't for anyone listening. It was not me. But if it was me, I'd know that was about me. And then I'd feel even worse. So I just, I would love your nugget of that while we're having this conversation. And then we can go back to kind of being steeped in the question. But your comment made me really think about that. Just like what I would recommend in that situation. Yeah. What do you do when there's a person and that turns into a policy? Oh, what do you do when that? Well, first off, you don't let that happen, right? Like you do have direct conversation with the person and like, dude, you're killing us. <laughs> like, like you got to put Holy the seat down. <laughs> you know, like we love you, but like but. no one wants to go in after you, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I so know um, a example, but it's the only like recent one I can think of. Well, it's, and, and again, you know, my work tomorrow, right. And yeah. I always talk about how can you be kind and candid and constructive, you know, when reaching out to people and, really coming from that place of care, concern, and curiosity Mm -hmm. rather than judgment or assumption. And it is, and like, there is a situation where if if you're on a team in which a policy got put in place to address one person, you could actually go to whoever created that policy and be like, we all know who this policy is for. I really ask you to step up and reach Mm -hmm. out to that person directly because that's actually what's going to make the difference here. Yeah. Uh, And it is like for the person that the policy was made for either one, they don't get the message, right? Like, so it makes no difference and everyone rolls their eyes or it does, it feels like not public shaming. It's not like that, but it's it's like, I meant about embarrassed. Like, I think you make it work for the person. Yeah. So it's it's awkward and it's not good for your culture. That's for um, sure. What are those three words you just said? Kind, candid, Constructive and constructive. Yep. Uh, I'm going to take us on another tangent for a second, but what you said reminded me of that. One of the things that's really important in innovation is constructive conflict. And especially when we're digging in and challenging, are we even solving the right question, right? The right challenge. And um, one of the things I've discovered is what makes a culture more innovative is the, is a space for constructive conflict. 
And that's a whole nother podcast. I've got a whole thing on that in the book. We can like dig into that another time. Um, but I think you're kind of saying that too with like the candid. I love how you said that though, candid, kind, and constructive. I think if we know we're coming from a place of good intention, um, it's easier to debate. I think it's important that we debate pe- uh, ideas, not people, right? We're not, I'm not Chris debating you. I'm debating the idea that I don't agree with for one reason or another. And having this recognition that that candidness that you mentioned actually really strengthens us and it strengthens innovation. But you have to have a culture where that's possible. Yeah. Well, and it really honors who we are as adults and people yeah. who care about the work that we're doing. Yeah. So, yeah, and and I do, I do want to circle back yeah. tomorrow um, because, again, I know you're going to on a lot of tangents. <laughs> here to listen to you, and um, and I love what you, what you brought to us today with the with these three questions, so we can really dig in and make mm-hmm. sure we're like asking the right question to start off with. Yeah, um, and I'm just curious if there's any kind of like cherry on top or or last big point that you want to make with this community so that they don't get stuck yeah. doing what we've done where we're putting way too much time, effort, and energy into the thing that like doesn't make a difference. And uh, let me just preface that by saying, uh, and I think I said this on the last one too, you know, you and I have been in a mastermind together for, in one way or another for years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And how, and this is what happens because we've made this mistake in the past. Uh, I've made this mistake where I come in with like, all right, here's the challenge I'm trying to solve. And then I walk away with an easel board of scented marker solutions that seem really great. And then like, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So that's why the challenge is so important. And I would, Chris, and I think our future brainstorms, I think we need to think about spending more time in the question because here, actually, here's my cherry. This is where this goes. Yeah. Just because I think I know I'm right or the other person thinks I know it, don't assume that that's accurate. Um, not to, to not at them personally, but I think we need to spend more time questioning ourselves and the people around us to make sure that we're solving the right thing. So, you know, I think I, I have a, a leader like me tends to speak with a lot of authority and like in a very declarative way. My team always makes fun of me. They say that I don't know how to use question marks because everything comes out as a statement, even my questions. So, but I do want feedback, but one of the most powerful things that's happened is, you know, like Laura on my team, I'll say, we need to figure this out. And she'll, she'll say, but what's really causing that? I'm like, oh, and then I have to start like backing up into it and really thinking about it. Um, yeah. So, you know, in that moment where someone comes to you with like, here's the challenge and here's why, I would encourage you to really take a moment to dig and make sure you're even solving the right thing. Even if it is, turns out it is, doing this exercise really gives you depth and clarity you wouldn't have before. So I, I think it's in those moments where we're like, yep, yep, got it, yep. Those are the moments we actually have to ask more questions because we tend to just be falling on our assumptions. Yeah, and wanting to go straight to action. Straight to action. Yeah, beautiful. Which, oh, I love, it's a challenge. Yeah, I got that. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, thank you. This has been really, really insightful. Thanks for hanging with us on Inside Launch Street. If you know someone that is truly ready to unlock their innovation advantage, have them join you on Launch Street. Discover your innovation advantage. Build a team of high-performing innovators and ignite ideas and solutions that create massive impact. G-O-T-O, launchstreet.com. Remember, innovators, if you don't take the leap, somebody else will.